How you doing? I'm Tony. Welcome aboard the Rambles. In today's video, we're going to take a look at a little something special. I picked up this Z-Gage starter set when I was on a trip recently, and I thought it would be the perfect thing to share with you. So I hope you enjoy. In a very chilly mid-December 2022, I spent a little more than a week traveling through Munich, Germany and parts of Switzerland. It was a true train lover's paradise. Not only did I take a couple of train rides, but I of course visited the hobby shops as you would do anytime you visit a new place. Throughout my time in Munich and in Switzerland, the big name was Marklin. You didn't see any orange boxes, you didn't see any purple boxes, you just saw predominantly white boxes with the big red lettering. As we'll get into momentarily, Marklin does have a wide variety of different options and many different gauges and scales, uh, so there's plenty to choose from. But I would be lying if I didn't say I was getting a little homesick, and so I looked for something in O gauge. But at 349 euros or 350 some dollars for a coach, that wasn't going to happen. I looked into N scale, but nothing really struck me as unique or particularly noteworthy. So I got this Z gauge starter set, which I'm really excited to share with you right now. But first, why don't we take a look at what Z gauge is and why Marklin developed it? One of the things that quickly became apparent in making this video is the outsized impact that Marklin had on the model railroad industry. They are credited with coming up with most of the gauges that are used today, and they created most of these gauges in the late 1800s and early 1900s before Lionel was even a company. I want to get into the different gauges that Marklin created. However, before we do, we should talk about what gauge is versus a scale. Gauge and scale are two different terms and they are not interchangeable. The gauge is the distance between the two outer rails and the scale is the size of say a locomotive relative to the real thing. We also call that the prototype. Marklin is credited with coming up with half O, which you may know as HO. The scale there is one to 87. Marklin is also credited with developing O-Gage for the first time. In Europe, the scale there is 1 to 43.5, whereas in the United States, the scale is 1 to 48. Marklin also developed 1-Gage and 2-Gage, both of which have scales similar to today's G-Gage, at 1 to 32 for 1-Gage and 1 to 22.5 for 2-Gage. It goes up from there to 3-Gage, 4-Gage, 5-Gage, with each iteration getting larger and larger, closer to the size of the prototype. Numbering the gauges in this way was really brilliant. However, in hindsight, this numbering standard seems a little bit short-sighted because model trains ended up getting smaller and smaller, not larger and larger. Of course, Marklin is making trains today. It's a very different company though from what it was back in the late 19th century. Briefly, I'll talk about the different gauges that Marklin still produces and some of the company names that they operate under. Of course, we're talking today in this video about Marklin Z gauge. That scale is 1 to 220. Marklin acquired a company called Trix and that's how they participate in the N-Gage market at a scale of 1 to 160. Marklin and Trix branding is on their HO, which we talked about was 1 to 87. Marklin no longer makes O-Gage, however, they are making 1-Gage, and that is 1 to 32. And actually, Thomas the Tank Engine was filmed using components of Marklin 1-Gage. And finally, Marklin acquired LGB in 2008, and today, Marklin still produces a whole line of G-Gage products under the LGB banner. LGB scale ranges from 1 to 20 to 1 to 32. So let's dive into this Z-Gage starter pack. Marklin introduced Z-Gage back in 1972 as a way to compete with N-Gage. This starter pack is a great introduction to the gauge. I think that Marklin did an excellent job with this minimalist cube shaped packaging, definitely paying homage to the design senses of Apple, even having the iPhone and AirPods on the packaging just solidifies this idea. 
Marklin seems to be going for a brand that says you can be a young professional, but also use this product. It's very different than what we see in the States. What do you think? Enough talking about what's on the outside, it's what's on the inside that counts. We get a small, and I mean really small, 060, as well as two pieces of rolling stock, a controller, and of course, track, which includes two straight pieces and 10 curved pieces. The radii on the curves are identical, they're just different length curved pieces. Finally, that image on the bottom right is a necessity. That is the re-railer to help you get the rolling stock and locomotive onto the tiny track. The full oval measures to be about 21 by 16 inches or 512 by 402 millimeters. On the bottom of the box, we can see that this product was made in the European Union. It doesn't mention which member state, but the European Union nonetheless. It operates at a maximum of 12 volts DC, and you must be 15 years or older to play with this train. This set claims to be the smallest mass-produced electric model train in the world. My friends over at T-Gage might disagree with you. Opening the box is a pretty neat experience. It's also very easy. There are tabs on either side. As you can see here, you simply pull them out and then lift the lid up and off of the box, revealing the whole train set inside. I really don't know if this video does it justice, but this is a super, super small train set. Now, just because the locomotive is small doesn't mean that your options are limited. Marklin includes this track plan brochure, which showcases all of the different track switches and different size curves that you can purchase to build out a full sized layout in this tiny gauge. There's also a club you can join and a manual so you know how to take great care of your brand new train set. Interestingly, on here, it says that the train set will only go up to 10 volts DC, despite the box having an indication for 12 volts. Make sure to lubricate the engine. Also, interestingly, the screw to take the shell off of the locomotive is in the back, and there's a brush you can buy to help brush off the dirt and dust. This is extremely important because any little bit of hair or dust can really affect the function of the train. I thought this diagram was pretty cool. I think it's interesting that the motor is mounted in the back here, uh, you know, in the orientation that I would consider downward. Finally, there's also a manual for the controller and uh, it works just as you would imagine. You know, you twist it counterclockwise to go in one direction, clockwise to go in the other. And here we run into our first issue. I'm going to have a heck of a time trying to get this to fit in a United States outlet, but I'll try my darndest. Finally, let's get a quick look at this controller. I found it to be a superb quality, probably the best I've ever had in a starter kit. The plastic has a premium feel and the knob has a good amount of tension, so you're not going to turn your trains on too fast or too slow. This top is creating way too much of a glare, plus I can't get to the trains. So let's go ahead and cut the tape on either side. That is so much better. Let's take a really close look at what comes in this set. As I mentioned earlier, these curved sections have the same radii, they're just different lengths. I am really surprised with how thin the gauge of the wire is on this power section of track. And this re-railer is also a lower quality than I was expecting. It has a lot more give and just feels cheap. The track section is a whole nother story though. This track section is surprisingly premium quality. It seems Marklin really invested in what matters. This powered section even has what looks like a tiny ceramic disc capacitor, which I can only assume helps with reliability. Now, turning our attention to the locomotive itself, I was going to joke and say, wow, this is so tiny, I needed tweezers to pull the locomotive out. When in actuality, well, okay, I dropped it the first time. 
but the tweezers actually are a huge help and this was probably the smartest way to take it out. As I expected, this tiny diecast locomotive is a really premium product, but I couldn't find directions for smoke fluid, so I just assume you put it in the smokestack and then hit it with a can of compressed air. Oh no! Rolling on to the rolling stock, let's first look at this gondola. On the box, they refer to this as a quote, low sidecar. I think that's just a translation issue or maybe how the British English would be for, for a car like this. At any rate, the wheels on the bottom have a type of claw that grabs onto the center of the axle, which is different from any other train set I've ever seen, but I would imagine necessary at this small scale. These are very highly detailed for the size that they are. There's even like a wood texture imprinted into the base and plenty of added on details, including text. Now the couplers are comically huge, but we don't know anything about that in O gauge, do we? Finally, we have this itty bitty banana boxcar. You may wonder how I know it's a banana boxcar. Let's just say it was a lucky guess. Hey Google, how do I say bananas in German? In German, bananas is bananen. This boxcar has just as much, if not more detail on it than the last piece of rolling stock we looked at. Both pieces of rolling stock, however, do have a little bit less of a premium feel. They are light and uh, feel a little bit flimsy. Now getting the track together is actually a real pain. Uh, the connectors are really tight and they squeeze onto the rail, but once they're together, they stay together because of these locks on the bottom. The re-railer is a real lifesaver and the rolling stock rolls surprisingly well straight out of the box. I didn't put any oil on them or anything and I was encouraged by how well this rolling stock rolled. Now, once on the track, it did have a tendency to fall off if not handled exactly in the right way. And I kind of attribute the weight and the overall size that we're dealing with to this factor. Of course, I've included a banana for scale, and in this case, it's a tunnel. But I will say, this is a great runner. It runs circles around anything that I have in O-Gage. I mean, literal circles. Here's an 060. The new trippy trolley. Let's go a little bit bigger. I weathered this myself, what do you think? My friend Harry Henning taught me how to do it and let me borrow some of his equipment. Finally, an entire 10-wheeler. Just run circles around it. And that's basically it. The story about this train is its size. Here it is compared to O-Gage figures. And I've also compared it to every other wheel set that I have. The smallest you see here is the Z gauge, followed by N gauge, followed by H, O, O, and G gauge. Finally, here you see it next to an H, O locomotive, followed by an N scale locomotive. It truly is a tiny wonder. Well, that's it. You sure get a lot in such a small package with this Z gauge starter set. I paid just around $150 for it when I was in Germany, and you know, I think it, it truly is worth it at that price. It's very well detailed. Take a look at these side rods while the train wheels are moving. I think for something so tiny to have such detail really is amazing. One thing I didn't talk about though is how finicky it seemed to be if it picked up dirt, dust, or hair. It could stall the engine at any point because I guess the contacts are so small, which with such a small surface area. That being said, I think that kind of comes with the territory. So what do I rate it? This gets a full chugga chugga choo out of my chugga chugga choo choo rambles rating. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider subscribing. I think 2023 will finally be the year where I build my layout. 
and you won't want to miss those updates. So take care and uh, I'll see you next time.